they don't intend to punish Trump. They intend to destroy him. Good evening. Welcome to the channel. I'm Brian Lusk. Let's discuss the series of lawfare lawsuits that Donald Trump is starting to see the first judgments from. We'll talk about the most recent one, which was put out just about two days ago now. I've had enough time to sit and contemplate how I feel about it, knowing how I feel about Donald Trump himself and about everything around this th this whole situation. And I'm ready to kind of give my opinion. So today's video is going to be entirely an opinion piece talking about an article from The Hill that talks about the situation. This gives an overall pretty decent summary of the situation. So let's go through it a little bit at a time here just to kind of get you the feel of what's going on. And I can give you my opinion as we go. Of course, we're going to start over here in New York, where, of course, Judge Ingeron has handed down a $354 million judgment against Donald Trump. Combined with the E. Jean Carroll judgment of $83.3 million, that means he's on the hook for $438 million. And it looks like the interest payments on the original $354 million may come up for another nearly $100 million for an expected total of around $550 million as the judgment against him. That is an eye-popping amount of money, an amount of money that most of us in the United States can't even fathom, though obviously not as big as all those numbers in the budget. Really, though, the takeaway is that they do not intend to merely punish Donald Trump. They want to destroy him. So let's go ahead and go through this, and we'll talk about the pieces. Even before this latest trial, Judge Ingron had already found that Trump, his business, and their executives liable for fraud. But this ruling really puts the penalties into place. Of course, Trump called it a manifest injustice and an unjust political crusade. But Ingeron responded by saying in his decision that their complete lack of contrition and remorse borders on pathological. So let's discuss that for just a moment. Judge Ingeron is saying that Trump is showing no signs of contrition or remorse. Trump is saying, I did not do anything wrong. And this is injustice. He's expecting remorse for something that Trump himself does not believe to be a problem. Is it? or is it not? I think it is safe to say that if Trump were anybody else, they would not be facing these charges. In fact, the prosecution of these charges is extremely rare. Let's compare briefly to the E. Jean Carroll case. The state of New York had to actually go back and rewrite some of their statutes of limitations, specifically carved to cover the time frame in question and therefore specifically tailored for the prosecution of Donald Trump. This is deliberate targeted persecution and should not be done in our nation. Does that mean he did or did not engage in the conduct that they're talking about there? Well, actually the jury says that he did not engage in the most heinous of that conduct and yet found him still liable for the assault associated. The dichotomy between those two positions is difficult to resolve and Trump loyalists have been pointing that out extensively. It's an issue. It is a problem. And it is clear that, again, this was very targeted persecution. They made effectively a law specifically to target Trump. That makes it into lawfare. Now let's go ahead and move over to your friend and mine, Wikipedia. Lawfare is the use of legal systems and institutions to damage or delegitimize an opponent or to deter an individual's usage of their legal rights. Basically, it can also represent a tactic used by repressive regimes to label and discourage civil society or individuals from claiming their legal rights via national or international legal systems. The thing is, it's pretty clear that they're pulling off a Soviet Union here from Stalin's era, where his big spy chief said, show me the man and I'll show you the crime. They have deliberately targeted Donald Trump and gone after everything he could potentially do that could have criminal conduct attached. Did he do it? Did he commit criminal conduct? 
I'm going to leave that alone because I don't necessarily know the details and I can't make that legal judgment. But what I can say is that this crime would not be prosecuted if Donald Trump was not on the Republican ticket, if he was not running for office again. The thing is that if Donald Trump was still the liberal Democrat that he was for decades before he ran for president, he would be absolutely loved by the left. They love their corrupt individuals who will work in with their system over there. They love that uh, anybody who will stand on their side, even if that person is corrupt. Just take a look at Bob Menendez, Mr. Goldbars himself. The thing, though, is that he may, in fact, be guilty of some of these charges. I have problems believing many of them, but I can absolutely see that some of them are likely true. But that, again, comes down to this targeted prosecution, one that should not be done in the United States of America. So we're looking at a Stalinist type of tactic being used to delegitimize and therefore stop Donald Trump. And that is, I think, a fundamental breaking of the commitment that we have to uphold the Constitution. That said, I don't believe anybody should be able to commit a crime and walk away free. If Donald Trump is being prosecuted for these crimes, then Joe Biden should be prosecuted for his own crimes as far as the uh, the handling of documents. He should be audited all the way through his 50 years of public service and every dollar accounted for to see if he truly is acting in a corrupt manner. In the same vein, I think that all of our politicians should be subject to such an audit to see where their money is coming from. These people are supposed to make $170,000 a year, and yet Nancy Pelosi's rolling in the money. So are several other of top leadership, and many of these people are making very good stock trades and additional information. All of them have to be prosecuted in order for the rule of law to mean a thing. You show me the man, I'll show you the crime. That is not how we are supposed to work here in the United States of America. So these fines, these fines are enormous. Let's go ahead and move on down the article here. Uh, from the Hill, by the way, Ingeron imposed a series of eye-popping fines on Trump and his business for conspiring with his top executives to defraud lenders. Now, they did bring in these banks, the representatives of these banks, and had them testify on Trump's behalf that the loans were issued, that they were paid back in full, and everything was hunky-dory, and they would loan again there's a lot of things going on there. It's clear that Trump probably inflated the value of his properties or the potential for them in hopes of at least getting more of these loans going his way. But the thing is, as far as I can tell, many business owners, especially in New York, do much the same thing. And that it means that all of them will need to be prosecuted for this crime. Every single one or justice is not being served. That includes Democrats and Republicans alike. But here's where it really crosses the line in my mind. They are deliberately blocking the Trump organization and many of the Trump family from doing business in New York at all for a period of three years. Considering that is where so many of their assets are currently located to block them from doing business where they are in New York is going to be just devastating for the New York economy. What are other companies going to think when they see what's just happened to Donald Trump? And if this judgment stands and is not struck down, it will destroy New York City and New York as a state by driving businesses clean out that are looking at their risks and saying, that's all it takes for somebody to get literally have their entire livelihood destroyed by the state. So this is where I think it goes too far. I, huge you know, fines. I have trouble with that, but at least I can understand them. The fact that the banks are happy with that lending situation, that they receive their money back and that everybody was happy about it. I, I'm not going to get tied up on that one. But this denying them the ability to do any business when a lot of their business is right there where they have millions upon millions of dollars in assets all tied up 
in New York State. This is not just punishing, it's meant to destroy. It's meant to destroy Trump. It's meant to destroy the Trump family. It's meant to destroy the Trump brand. And it's meant to destroy the Trump candidacy for president. Now, they're also enhancing the independent oversight of Trump's business empire. This is something I actually have less problems with, even though I don't like it. Uh, I think that an oversight type situation, when you have an organization that has been engaged in shady practices like this, is actually a valid thing you could do to get them back on the straight and narrow path and back into doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're extending that even more. I don't like, however, the thought of government being so uh, handsy in your business. They should not have a role there, not in the boardroom or anywhere else. The government should only be looking for crimes and prosecuting those crimes in as much as is required by the by the written law as it stands. This, again, is punishing and is, in fact, intended to make the cost of being in business in the state of New York so high that it is impossible for the Trump organization, for Donald Trump, to recover, and they want him destroyed. On top of that, Ingron had even ordered that their business certificates be canceled, which would mean the Trump organization would lose control of their properties without any compensation by the government. This is literally illegal to do unless they can prove that those properties are directly involved. That would be it's not even an asset seizure. If they seized the assets, that would be one thing. Instead, by canceling these business certificates, they leave them in this state of legal limbo where anybody could pick them up instead of being actually controlled and under proper and proper methods here. This attempted asset seizure is meant to leave things in such a cloud for the Trump organization that nobody will want to do business with them again because they'll be so concerned about this cloud. Now, that's not to say that Donald Trump is a good guy. I do not believe that Donald Trump should be president again. I don't believe that he is mentally fit to do so, much like I don't believe Joe Biden is mentally fit to do so. It is so clear to me that Joe Biden is not in control of our government, which leaves who is as the big question. Donald Trump seems to be in a similar situation. He does seem to have issues with his a mental acuity at times. I'm not saying he's not a good businessman. That's a totally different thing. What I am saying is that both men appear to be in a state of mental decline. They are certainly not spring chickens anymore. Neither one is a conservative. Neither one is actually on the side of the conservative causes it's just a matter of which one you think is the lesser of two evils. But the thing is, more than anything else, these types of judgments really tick me off because instead of allowing Donald Trump to disappear into the night, to be, to be literally defeated at the ballot box uh, resoundingly, these actually reinforce Trump's comments that he is being persecuted, that he is being deliberately targeted in unlawful and unjust ways. And that makes it play even better to his base and to even the public at large. The problem being that instead of doing these things in a proper way, instead of showing that you are truly just and that justice is blind, these show that the justice system in the United States is becoming so corrupt that it'll be a miracle if we can bring it back from the brink. And I pray that we do. So let me know what you think about this Trump situation in the comments below. Give me that thumbs up if you enjoyed this opinion that I've provided today. Let me know what you think of my brief comments about it as well. You have a great rest of your day and we'll see you on the next video.